Hi guys, welcome back. In this video, we're gonna talk about what you can do if you got glutenated, if you got exposed to the devil molecule. This is a list of things you can do to help get some relief and curtail any damage that's going to happen. First and foremost, let's talk about what happens when you get exposed to gluten and have a reaction to it if you have celiac disease or non-celiac gluten sensitivity. The two are reasonably similar, so I'm gonna talk about them kind of under just the umbrella of gluten sensitivity, but know that this is very much applicable for celiacs as well. So I draw the human digestive tract, totally not to scale, but hopefully it's enough to be helpful. Food obviously comes in the mouth, goes down the esophagus, hangs out in the stomach for a while, and then hits the small intestine and finally the colon. The small intestine is really where most of this conversation is at. Unless you have a wheat allergy or a gluten allergy, you probably don't experience symptoms the moment the gluten hits your mouth or your throat. It's gonna be a little while later, maybe minutes or hours later, when the food really hits your small intestine. And the importance is that the majority of your immune system, these blue cells that I've drawn here, live in and along the lining of the small and large intestine. And they're there for a reason. They're trying to protect you. So on the one hand, thank you guys. But on the other hand, we need to calm you down if you have just gotten exposed to gluten. So let's imagine that we are some food, a bolus of food, and it's right there in the middle of that lumen, that middle space of the digestive tube. So I've drawn some of the particles and you could imagine that this is bacteria and viruses and yeast and whatever critters you've got living in there, plus any food that you've taken in. And those could be allergenic or antigenic proteins that your immune system wants to keep track of. And it could be like toxins from the bacteria. There's all sorts of stuff that could go wrong in the digestive tube. And that's why these immune cells are here. They are sentinels waiting in your immune army. And some of them, for example, this one that I depicted here, they actually have little feet that stick up through the epithelial barrier. So this is the gut wall itself. And that's what we talk about when we talk about healing leaky gut. We talk about healing these brown cells, the epithelial layer. It sticks it up either into the mucus or past the mucus layer and starts sensing and sampling for any sort of weird stuff. Now, if there are bacteria, for example, if you have an infection or dysbiosis, then maybe that cell is going to get a chance to sample more bacterial proteins and bacterial toxins than it otherwise would have. And then it can relay that message to the other immune cells that are hanging out down there. Or in the case of gluten, if you are a person for whom you have a pre-sensitized immunological reaction to gluten, if your immune system has gone bonkers against gluten before and it's already labeled it as the enemy, it's already gonna know, oh hey, I see that gluten, we know that's the enemy, we'd better do something about it. And then it'll tell its neighboring cells, it'll say, hey T cell, hey B cell, you need to cook up some inflammation. You need to act like this is a pathogen or this is an enemy because I think it is. We've seen this before, we know we don't like gluten, go ahead and launch an inflammatory reaction. And then what'll happen is that you get a lot of inflammatory soup as I jokingly call it. So there's a lot of chemicals that these cells will secrete and that'll change the chemical environment surrounding the gluten exposure, but also broadly throughout your whole body. And this is when we will start to get the symptoms of cramps and diarrhea and bloating if you are celiac, for example, or maybe your rheumatoid arthritis flares up or your Hashimoto's flares up or your other autoimmune disease flares up. I know for my mom, I'm pretty sure she's a celiac, but her biggest complaint is that her RA flares up. And she can tell automatically when she gets exposed to gluten. For me, to this day, it's still my low back. My right sacroiliac joint will still flare up if I get exposed to gluten, even in trace amounts. And that's my first tell, even before the digestive stuff sets in. So it's different for everybody. If you're gonna manifest body-wide inflammation symptoms first, or if you're going to have local gut inflammation symptoms first. But nonetheless, inflammation cooks up, and then that's where the problem is. So there's a couple of interventions where we can start to work on this. And the key points are either here, believe it or not. So modifying the amount of gluten that gets exposed to the immune cells further down the tube. And that, the absolute best thing, is digestive enzymes. Specifically one called DPP4. Now there's a lot of commercial blends with this on the market. I really like a product called Gluten Flame. And I'll tell you what, I am just paranoid enough because I'm pretty sure I'm a celiac too. 
I carry this with me at all times. It's always in my purse. I have a little baggie of an enzyme called gluten flam that contains DPP-4 that breaks down gluten at least somewhat. And I carry that with me at all times. And basically I take at least one every time I go out to a restaurant and eat. And if I'm suspicious that there might be cross-contamination or an issue, I might take two, three, or four. And I have had this really, really save my butt and curtail a lot of the damage if I take it quickly enough. The key being quickly enough. Ideally, you take digestive enzymes before the meal, like 10 or 20 minutes before the meal is ideal. But even if you have exposure to gluten and you take it after the fact, that can still be beneficial. I'll never forget, I was in San Diego for a conference and I was yucking it up with my friend. We hadn't seen each other in a long time and our food arrived and I'd already just absolutely grilled the, the guy about whether or not it was gluten-free and he assured me it was quinoa. And I took a bite of my food without looking at it. And I looked down and I realized that it was quinoa plus something else. Fast forward, we found out it's farro and I just ate like half a spoon full of farro because it was a 50-50 mix with quinoa. And I immediately pounded down like six of these gluten flams and it actually curtailed a lot of the damage. I got very minorly bloated. I think my back hurt me a little bit, but I didn't get the normal like pregnant belly, miserable bloating and diarrhea that I normally would have. So I can really attest to something like this. And again, the enzymes are better if you take them ahead of time, ahead of the meal even, but even if you take them after the fact, when you have that oh shit moment and you realize that you just ate gluten, it could still be really helpful. Now it's worth pointing out at this stage of the game that we can try to break down the gluten with digestive enzymes, and we can try to make that molecule unrecognizable to the immune system, but we can't just bind it up. I know a lot of people on the internet and in Facebook groups talk about using binders like charcoal or clay to try to bind up the gluten and detox from this reaction. And I just don't think that that's been helpful. I've, I've seen a couple of people comment about using it and it didn't really help them. Really what I use charcoal and clay and binders for is bacterial toxins. They're much smaller, they're a little bit more charged, and that's what the charcoal is gonna pull in. It pulls in negatively charged particles and proteins, and it can do a much better job, in my opinion, with bacterial toxins and die-off reactions. And we'll talk about that a little bit when we get to the help I got food poisoning video, because I am gonna do a video on that next. But just so you know, charcoal and clay to bind up the gluten and remove it is going to be of limited usefulness, but trying to break down the gluten into something that's not recognizable for your immune system so that there are tiny, tiny particles making its way through can actually make a world of difference. Now the next point of intervention, if you've already been glutenated, is to say, well, the immune system has already gotten access to some of these gluten peptides. We don't want the immune system to then go on and create the inflammation and do the squirrely inflammatory stuff. So the next line of defense, if you can't do digestive enzymes or if you've already done that, the next line of defense is gonna to try to be to modify this response. And you could do that with a myriad of anti-inflammatories. My absolute favorite is ginger because not only is ginger going to modify this inflammatory cellular environment, it's also going to work on the muscles and the nerves and the tissue surrounding the area of assault and it's going to help calm that down. So if your gut is in spasm, if the muscles are spasming because of the inflammation, ginger is an antispasmodic and it will help release that tension and help the muscles calm down. If you are having motility problems, particularly if you have a history of IBS or SIBO in addition to the gluten sensitivity, that will help facilitate the movement, the motility of the food through your intestines so that you can get rid of it quicker rather than, uh, sooner rather than later is the expression. So I really, really like ginger. The other things might be green tea. And then of course, turmeric is very, very famous right now. Uh, I probably wouldn't do something like fish oil for the record. I think that that would be a little bit slower acting and it's not something that you could take for instant gratification typically. Um, fish oil best works when you build up over months and months and months of use. But something like turmeric, green tea, ginger, or a combination of the three, ideally, or boswellia, any of these herbal anti-inflammatories can start to get to work very, very quickly, and that could be helpful in the short term when you're experiencing this discomfort. And finally, don't underestimate the power of your own hands. 
you might not need as many of the fancy dancy supplements and herbs as you think, but a nice good old fashioned tummy massage might go a long way. I just uploaded a video earlier about my abdominal massage and that's a really great, really gentle massage that you could do even when you're acutely flared up. And if you want to add, say, a little bit of coconut oil and some essential oils to that, you could really go a long way with that. There are various blends. I mean, Plant Therapy and doTERRA, all of them have some sort of digestive blend, and I've heard good things about most of them. So you could add a little bit of an essential oil blend for that. The other one that I keep on hand that I have seen be damn miraculous is cardamom. I keep cardamom essential oil around, and honestly, it makes a really nice tea also but cardamom is a digestive aid and it helps release some of the gas and the tension and the bloating. And it can be really be used either internally or externally as an essential oil. So I keep one of those digestive blends around and I keep cardamom essential oil around and I use them both diluted on the stomach in conjunction with a little bit of tummy massage with some deep breathing because you don't want to get your vagus nerve and your adrenals all jacked up in the process of this. But between that, the tummy massage, the essential oils topically, maybe drinking a tea with ginger and cardamom and turmeric or some combination of anti-inflammatories and then getting that digestive enzyme on board if you have it, I think that will curtail a lot of the damage. And then anything else you do beyond that to recover, if you get acupuncture, if you get a massage, if you do something else, that's just gravy on top of this. But in the acute term, I would do these couple of things and I hope that you feel better soon. Hey guys, if you like this video, be sure to subscribe, ring the bell, click the like button, and leave a comment down below with the videos that you would like to see me do next. Doing all of those really helps support the channel and support my efforts in making as many videos as possible for you guys. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video.